What's up guys? So we're going to do a little, you know, update video on what the reselling business has been like. So I haven't been uploading as consistent as I'd like, which is a shame to all of you out there and to me, but there's a reason for that. One, my wife is on a training for work. She left pretty much the entire week and that means I've been solo dad with my son, Seth, which is way more challenging. He's 18 months. And yeah, it's a lot, you know, the one night he didn't sleep a lot. So it was tough for me to stay focused. But what do you do as a business owner whenever you do have to change up your schedule? For me, I have to focus on just shipping the items. Now I do have a part-time employee, Randy. She comes in and works and does photos. I've been training her more on shipping so that she can come in and do that. However, our inventory racks are too high for her to reach the very top row. So I typically pick the items for her when I come to the office and then she's been shipping and doing photos. So that's great. But as you guys know, on my sourcing videos, the ones that I go all day to the Dallas uh, Fort Worth area, I'm able to do that because my wife can take care of the household and my son. When she's not here, I cannot take those long trips. Now I could probably go and go to a few stores and come back, but then say something happened to my son at daycare and he needed to be picked up because he got sick, I'd have to be there for him. Pretty much right now, I'm uh, doing it all and trying to source in town, which we only have three thrift stores in town. Really, one of them is like very good, and then the other two are just hit and miss. You know, When they restock, chance it can be good. When they don't, it's pretty bad. I don't do a lot of footage of those videos just because Sometimes I don't find much of anything there, and then other days I find like 20 items. So it's definitely a balance. But what I've noticed doing this for the last couple of years is, you know, having help can be tremendous. If you're able to afford to pay for somebody to do some of the work, you buy back some of that time and you get things done. But even if you do have a change in your schedule, say there's like, you know, your uh, significant other is out of town, or maybe like uh, something tragic happened, or a car wreck, or something where like, things just change dramatically, you still have to shift and you still have to make money. So one of the things I do is I like to make reels for other businesses. So recently there was an estate sale and I made a video for them. And with that, I kind of get a chance to see the inventory there if I want to buy it. However, they didn't have any clothes. So that was like a huge bummer because getting early access to a thrift store, a friend who's like trying to sell stuff and estate sale, things like that you can really come up on some really nice things. Now there's a toolbox that I do want to buy. So I'm going to go there today and hopefully be first there and get like privy to get access to buy that. But, uh, other than that, you know, I still make some money off of that video that I provide for them. And then you possibly get potential leads to other customers through that service. And that's something that I really enjoy. And it's very beneficial to somebody who doesn't know how to make videos and like doesn't really deal with the social media and technology. But uh, if you're able to provide something of value to those who have other businesses related to yours, you can possibly work some type of deal, whether it's inventory, just payment, things like that. Right now, I'm just listing items. I'm going to see if I can list items while I talk. I, I pretty much listen to podcast or I'll listen to uh, other YouTubers, things like that whenever I'm listing items. And it's honestly just kind of, it keeps my brain kind of distracted from the listing because honestly, I've listed so many items that it gets very monotonous on like, you know, selling similar off your own items, which I've made videos on that. If you do have a lot of the same liked items, selling similar off of them can be one of the faster ways to get those items listed. There's very little, um, variance in the listings because the items are similar and you're going to be able to you know have the same shipping preferences the same return preferences a lot of times people will sell similar off of an item and then they end up inheriting all the other preferences from somebody else and it may not be what you want and a lot of people don't check that and then what happens is it'll actually eBay will create a new like slot for like you can choose that type of preference like it creates a new one every time you save a draft I believe or maybe you have to list the item but it saves a new method of like okay that's the shipping you like so you end up going to that shipping preferences page through your my eBay and you'll have a ton like I think the first time I looked at it because I didn't even know it existed there was like a hundred different ones because I was just an everything seller I was copying listings from other people because I thought that was the fastest way which it is definitely pretty fast. It wasn't very clean. So 
you know, as you get into this business more, you start seeing ways to kind of clean things up and and increase your speed whenever you're doing these listings. It's very important to be able to grow the business and also kind of like shift into other things because if you want to double down on reselling, being in the right area is definitely going to help. You know, if you're around thrift stores where you can make content going to yard sales, flea markets, thrift stores every single day, and then you have a bunch of content you can choose from, it's a lot better to build that type of business for creating content than if you only have one day a week where you can go to a bunch of stores and then you're just hoping you get some good content. Because a lot of times, I don't want to just show you guys a bunch of like, you know, average to below average items because it's not very exciting it's not very enticing and it kind of leads me to think like how much youtube can i produce that you guys want to like look at and uh, i have it i have a comment from somebody that i want to read to you guys and i think i'll put it on the screen here so you can see it but um, i don't know if it's gonna be very clear so i'm just gonna kind of read it from my desktop and it was a very well thought out comment you know very very generous it was from Carolyn. She said, hello, hope your day is going well. I've been watching more and more of your videos but haven't seen all of them yet. So I appreciate you Carolyn for watching because that always helps. I know you've already done this in November 23rd. That must have been when the video posted. Uh, but for me, a great video idea would be to, uh, would simply be a short, concise update video that concentrates on name brands that sell really well and fast but also brands that aren't necessarily something that is common, ladies and men's. And then further break down the brands which bring the, harsh ret the highest return on investment. I think it would be very informative, an interesting video, and since you probably already knew all these names, you could knock it out quickly. I know that you're getting a lot of sponsored videos now, which is great, but the content you put out is very valuable and I appreciate it. A lot of eBay resellers that make YouTube videos have a big following tend to eventually fall into a pattern of videos that don't help us newbies at all. P.S. Thanks again. Sorry for any typos. And this is great to get this kind of feedback because whenever you get feedback like this instead of just a uh, great sale like thanks for the video, which those comments are good too, this one really tells you like a direction of where to go because uh, running your own business, you don't have to. You don't have any boss or anybody telling you like what needs to be done. You just kind of just do whatever you feel like doing. But as far as the YouTube creator, uh, this is somebody who, you know, is new to reselling and they want like, I would say the most valuable information, which makes sense. You know, they want which brands sell well, which brands sell fast, what's the highest return on investment, and then um, men's and women's. And then like, you know, it's all broken down nice and concise and neat for you guys, like kind of sort of like a cheat sheet. Now, the problem with that is when I did my... Um, biggest uh, best bolos video that might be the one she's referring to on november 23rd a lot of those brands are still the same you know i'm always looking for the same brands sometimes new brands come onto the scene and some brands will fall off as you know like untuck it four or five years ago was a 50 to 40 to 50 dollar shirt a long sleeve button up now it's like an 18 to 23 dollar shirt and you know that's important to know but uh, another thing with this is you know, my area where I see items are pretty similar. Like they don't change a lot. Like if you're on different parts of the country, different coast, say you're in Florida and you have a lot of, you know, goods in your area and, and maybe the vintage scene is better there than others, or you're on the West coast and there's just brands that I don't see. So it really helps to like understand where you're at. And then as far as me making a video like that, you know, I could spend four five, six hours making like a really neat video with enough uh, you know, data on there to make it worth my wild. And the video could make like 20 to $30, you know, in four to six hours. Now it could make $200, which would be good. But, you know, the reel that I made for another company that made me, um, a couple hundred dollars and it was very fast. It took like an hour and a half. So you kind of have to decide like, you know, Return on investment, she was asking about the brands. Well, I have an ROI for myself and my time. You know, what's the highest return on investment for what I'm doing? Making this video today, like I'm uh, trying to kind of just let people like, kind of know where I'm coming from. As a business owner, a lot of people watching are doing this part-time, and maybe there's some that are full-time. And you kind of have to decide, like, 
how much time do I put into something to see that return and how long is it going to take to see that? Like uh, reselling, for example, I was listing 35 items a day at the highest and then I was selling a lot and then I got to the point where I was spending so much time sourcing, uh, time away from my family and the money wasn't as good as I want it to be. I thought I could profit a hundred grand in the clear and I haven't gotten to that. And I don't think I will through eBay. I think, um, we'll probably sell a little more than last year. We did 207,000 last year. We'll probably do like 220 this year, maybe, but I don't think the profit's going to be over 65,000. I think it's going to be about the same because again, it's, it's a sourcing problem, you know, like how to get the best items, the, the items you want to see from this next uh, video that I plan to produce. I think I'm just going to talk about the best items I see on eBay, not like niche down, but just like a generic brand. And there's tons of other creators who have made these videos. And I've watched some of them, and for me it's hard to watch because I know I'm not going to see some of those brands in the stores. And then it's hard to make that video like entertaining and exciting. You know, I can put like soft B-roll uh, or like music or sound effects that are kind of subtle and, and animations and things like that but then it, it increases the time of the video edit and you know it may it may go viral like get like over 100 you know, a couple hundred dollars in adsense and then um you know she mentioned that people get a lot of sponsorships for their videos and then they're not like that great of content now the thing about that is a sponsor may pay a couple hundred bucks for a video and then you hope you're fans like accept it and you know maybe you know convert to the product or whatever you're trying to push and if they don't that's okay but that money is is way higher the return on investment for making the video is way higher than just trying to make that creative video like very few people out there are making videos that are viral every single time some people are uh, accumulators like if you're a football fan and you see like Alex Smith or Kirk Cousins like they've played a long time at just a good enough level that people trust those quarterbacks to be just good enough. But then it's it's very rare to find the one that's viral year after year after year, like your Tom Brady's or Patrick Mahomes kind of kind of guys for that type of football analogy. But you know, Chicago Bears have Caleb Williams, so hopefully we can be that high end level where we're viral every single week, every single year, year over year. For me personally, I think one of the things I want to focus on is if I do put out a video maybe once every two weeks and then maybe run a live every week or some type of video like this updating every week, the ones that I spend the more time on, I want those to be good, strong videos similar to what Carolyn's asking for. Like if you want a video on like concise brands and like a generic ROI or like what my opinion is on what you should go for, and then maybe I will spend some more time doing that. But if you want like um, I was watching the Trash to Cash podcast, Commonwealth Picker. He said he does five videos a week. I know ADH Dave does about five a week, and that's it's crazy. Like that, they're really going deep into YouTube because they're making a lot more money. You know, they're getting a lot of views, and their their sponsors are paying more. The sponsors pay more based on like the engagement of the channel and what they believe in you as a creator. You know, some people have set and fast rules of, like we're only going to pay this much money for this one minute ad or two minute ad, and then others give you more creative control or they trust you more to convert on the sales or you make commissions off the sales. So when people say click your links, they're affiliates, they're able to get money off of that and maybe that's more what the brand wants. So for me, I think I want to turn to like, if I'm going to make a video for you guys that is one of these uh, more in-depth videos, I may throw a sponsor in there because one, the video may do really well, which will help the sponsor because you do want to do right by them. But at the same time, uh, every once in a while, you guys will get like a video of that of mine that you know is something you can really apply to your business rather than just um, me hanging out like talking to you guys. But I, I do think some people like to see like the behind the scenes and like how things actually work with the businesses because you know some YouTube creators always have a script. Some of them always want to show just what they think is the best thing, like the stuff that will go viral because they're putting the time in and they want to make the money, you know, and then others like kind of throw a bunch out and, and want to get uh, like a consistent viewer. So somebody who's hooked on your channel, you know, when you watch a TV show like uh, Family Guy or The Simpsons or, you know, I don't know, Modern Family, whatever it is out there, 
every week you know what to expect. You're getting the same cure, you're the same pattern, same formula of a video. And to me, it's not, it's just not something I really like to do that much, you know. But it's great because you're building a relationship with your community, and you know the money can be good. But if you're not making ten thousand plus views a video, like you're really not cracking a uh, hundred dollars a video. So it's it's tough to do. And the ones that do it well on YouTube, which you guys all know, the big channels, they uh, they've got it down. Like they figured it out, and they're able to do it. I for one, like a little bit of variation in my life. I like to do different things. The video creation, not just for businesses, but other companies online, it's actually very, I think it's kind of at a, um, I want to say cutting edge isn't quite the word because yeah, videos have been around for a while, but like the style of certain videos and what people are doing, they're starting to understand that short form content is what everybody is converting from. You see TikTok shop is now available where if you buy something, um, it'd be like a nice little video from somebody and it's, it's fast. Now, if I were to put out TikTok shop videos, then you can make a pretty good money. Like I know, for example, there's a creator that made $57,000 in two months from just doing the TikTok shop videos and that's commissions off of the products, not AdSense or anything like that. So who's, who's, who's me to say like, why don't I replicate that and try to make that type of money? It's just difficult, you know, when you're juggling a lot of different businesses, when you're juggling a family, it's hard to really go all in because bills still have to get paid. Like I've done some TikTok videos that just didn't do well at all. I got like 300 views on a short, which is terrible. So always trying to break it down. I just thought I'd kind of get on here and talk to you guys a little bit. Uh, it may not be the type of video a lot of people want to see. A lot of people may not care. Like a lot of people just watch my videos just for what am I selling? How much am I selling it for? Where am I buying it? Like you know, things like that. And I get it, you know, and I have, I have videos on that and, and other people have really good videos on it, but uh, I kind of want to just let you in a little bit on like what I'm thinking, especially this week being different, not having my wife around. I mean, if anybody's a single parent out there, I mean, kudos to you. I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you have the energy to do it. I mean, pretty much, you know, I work from the time I drop him off at eight in the morning until about uh, five when I pick them up and then from five till nine, I'm full on dad mode. You know, we're talking park, uh, feeding, bath time, managing my dog. You know, I got to keep Ragnar entertained too. And then, um, baths and then getting him to bed and then hoping he doesn't wake up in the middle of the night, like too many times. So, and then doing it all over again. I haven't been working out like I wanted to. My fitness is kind of getting like meh, you know, I really want to put on some weight or at least some strength, but um, do I sacrifice trying to make money for that? You know, yeah, mental health and physical health is good, but at the same time, it's not like I'm unhealthy, but it's, I could definitely be better. And it just, it, it blows my mind when I see people, um, who are able to manage so many things all at once. And I wonder how they do it. So, uh, you guys have like a little insight into what I'm talking about. And, uh, thank you, Carolyn, for your comment. Uh, I'm definitely going to look into doing that video and I'm going to do it right. I think I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to do a little bit of like research, create a folder, put all the data in there, the clips, you know, cause you got to like resize those photos. You always want to see the tags and like all that. That's like a separate photo and a resizing and then it just adds time. So if you have like 20 brands, which I think that's a nice round number, um, it can take, it can take quite a while. So we're going to see what we can do though. Appreciate everyone watching. I hope this video wasn't too boring for some of you guys. Uh, but it's just something that I kind of wanted to get out and you know let you know where I'm at and that I haven't forgotten about you guys. I definitely think about you guys. I read all the comments. I try to respond to all of them, and you know I'm just trying to trying to make it here myself too, right? Like as much as I want to help everybody else, I got to feed myself and and make things happen. So sometimes that's sacrificing a video for, um, you know, doing other work for other businesses in the form of like you know content creation, and that's kind of. Uh, it's kind of how it goes. So appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully we go live. My wife will be back Friday, so maybe we'll go live this weekend and you know ship some items and just kind of talk a little bit while I uh, prep this 20 item, best brands, best ROI. I don't know about ladies. Maybe we can do 10 and 10. It's possible. I don't. I am picking up some women's brands, but um, maybe we, I can share some of that with you guys and you guys can get a little insight and see uh, maybe you can... Uh, find some of those in your area and, and make a little bit of money. So once again, appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.